funny looks how you are doing today. Alrighty, we are still talking about Brother Job. Praise God. Because <laughs> on yesterday we were speaking about, do you still be, do you believe this? You know, and God was really having us to go to John 11, 25, and 26. And where God spoke to um, the sister of Nazareth. And those guys said Nazareth. Yeah, Nazareth. And um, to ask and was like, well, actually, excuse me, before he even asked her a question, he said that I am the resurrection and the life. Do you still believe this? And we're still going to be stuck on, do you still believe this? Because it's tied to the trust. Well, people, people of God, you all have to understand that when you trust the Father, when you trust the Father, because it's going to come a time in your place through, your, through the walk with the Lord, that you're going to have to trust. It's not going to always, God, bless me with this, and you get it instantaneous. Because what if you just, you prayed and you got it instantaneous? It would not cause for you to have trust, right? And Job shows a big illustration of about Trusting the Lord, trusting the Lord, even through when you want to bad mouth God, you still trust the Lord. It's something deeper than your soul. It's something that's like deep and, and full of intimacy in your spirit. It's like you know what, my flesh telling me, believe it, believe, believe, believe God. And then the spirit is like, nah, pimping, just hold on some more. Because the Bible tells us that with faith and patience you inherit the promise. In Hebrews, Amen. So that is our main goal. With faith and patience, you inherit the promise. That's good. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 So, I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis. I'm not even going to crack up with my baby today. I've noticed that we go quicker that way. And it's not even so much of being quicker, but we could break down the word. But as I was saying, I was like, Lord, what's the point of breaking it down if it's just going to make me sound like I know what I'm talking about and the people don't get it? Uh, that's, that just kills the purpose. We have to learn, we have to learn, people of God, that it's not about all that big, uh, I could break down two and make it five if you want me to. No, no, nobody cares, nobody cares. I mean, unless it makes you feel good, then amen, praise God, rejoice with you. <laughs> amen. So we're going to be, we're going to actually be jumping, we're going to be skipping a whole lot of chapters because I did that for a reason. Job is very lengthy. Um, and it is like, it's conversations going back and forth with Job and his three friends, Eli, Billy, and Zoe. Um, and Eli, Billy, and Zoe is still trying to come up with this brilliant idea or trying to solve an infinite problem with the, uh, uh, excuse me, a finite solution. You can't do it. That's when you can recognize you're religious, right? So now I was like, Lord, can I go to Job 41? And then I was permitted, so I was like, okay, cool. So, Job 41, this is where Jesus speaks, and I'm, you know, I'm using my message translation, and Jesus, well, God was just saying to Job, he was asking him questions, he was like, I'll let you speak, now, I got questions, and I need straight answers, that's how I said it in the message translation, I was cracking up last night, I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, you're funny, you're hilarious, but the title of it is, I Run This Universe, I Run This Universe. Once you realize that God runs this universe, once you realize that out of the book of Psalms where the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, you will no longer be confined. You will no longer be restricted or be restricted um, with any of these physical and tangible things. You will not because you have to understand that if I am in the Father, if I am in Jesus that allowed me to be in the Father, then this is my, this is my uh, platform. This is my palace. This is my footstool. Because the earth is the Lord's footstool. Amen. So, I was like, okay, Jesus, we talking. Okay, so what's next? So, in Job 41, he was just asking questions of Job. He didn't even let Job speak. <laughs> For, like, a, a matter of fact, he, yeah, two whole uh, chapters, God was just asking questions. It, was, it wasn't even, like, short questions like, why is this? I mean, he was asking stuff that were pra it was practical to Job. See, God is so intimate with us, people of God, that he knows the very hair that's on your head. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of hair. You're looking at me, a lot of hair, a lot of hair. <laughs> Amen. So now we're going to Job 42. Job 42, this is where Job speaks. Job is, you know, I even like how the message translation translation relate relate this. I was like, God, that's good. And in this when Job was speaking, 
in a synopsis. This is what the man of God said. Nothing and no one can upset your plans. You ask, who is this muddying the water, ignorantly confessing the, um, the issue, second-guessing my purposes? And then Job, because he, he asked a question, um, he was actually posing a question to God, but then he answered it because I'm infamous for posing a question and I answer myself. <laughs> so he did that. He, he, he posed a question to God and he answered it himself. And he, basically he's saying to God, like, you asked who is messing up, who, who doesn't know their purpose. And this is what Job said. I admit I want to live by rumors of you. Now, somebody say now, 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 now. I have it all firsthand from my own eyes and ears. And when I read that, I said, my God, yay. In other words, this is what Job is saying, people of God. This is what Job is saying. Lord, I have now understood the reason, of the purpose of why all of this is occurring. Because you wanted me to experience you. Mm, 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 mm. God wanted Job to experience him because Job only experienced him as in the prosperity. But now God is saying, you know what? You know what? The devil, he might have been up to something, but you know what? He still doesn't run anything. But you know what? I'm going to use this very test. I'm going to use this very test and to see his loyalty, his heart towards me. Amen. And sure enough, Job remained. Job remained no matter what what messenger came, no matter what was taken from him, no matter if his lousy friends would come and say that, you know, you you just might as well just do stuff with your life. Boy, bye, shut your face. <laughs> Amen. So when I read that, I was like, God, that's good. That is why God wants us to trust him, people of God. Sometimes we look at the process of trusting as, oh, God is moving slow. God is moving slow. He's really not. He is really not. And I heard a teaching last night, and I thought that was, I thought it was very awesome. Matter of fact, Pastor uh, John Merritt, or excuse me, James Merritt, love him. You all should look him up on Twitter. It's Touching Lives Ministry. Love him. And he said this. He said, it's three components to why Jesus want, why Jesus wants us to trust, or why he has us has us to wait, why he waits so he can build trust in us, is to allow us to build our faith. And I was like, okay, to give the glory of God. And then also, just so that you now have experienced the, the glory, the Shekinah, the, the Pleroma of God. Because people have to understand, oh, I want the Pleroma of God. I want the Shekinah glory. I want this. But how you want to do something like that if you have not experienced God? Like that. Because basically what you're saying, you've heard somebody else say it in church. and say, ooh, I want the Shekinah. And you don't even know what Shekinah is. Because we have to understand, Shekinah glory is different. It's a difference. It's, you're talking about the temple of God now. <laughs> you're talking about the temple of God. I mean the true presence, precious glory of God being filled and adulterated in the temple. Do you know that? Don't say something you don't know. I've learned that. Don't say something because it will come back to bite you in the the hiney. It really would. <laughs> so I, I say something like this. You cannot you can never live your life through somebody else's experience. You will never be delivered through somebody else's experience. And I've learned that firsthand. I'll tell you a quick testimony. Through this time of me warring with the enemy about my health and just so much, right? And I just knew in my heart, I was like, you know what? If I can just go to Benny Hinn, this is exactly what I I remember saying this in my head. Because growing up, I watched Benny Hinn since I was like three. I was seen at the TV like, oh, my gosh, this is going to happen to me. Oh, my gosh. You know, and I was so excited. And I never forget, I was so upset. Was it, I think it was like a couple years ago. I was so upset. He went to this um, church named Divine Faith in, uh, what is that, Jonesboro, Georgia. And I was so mad at my mom. I was like, why you ain't tell me Benny Hinn came? You know, that's my my second dad. Are you serious? Ugh. I got that attitude with her. But God was showing me that, Yana, I, you could have any person to lay their hands on you. You could have any person that, that has the, how can I put this, have the double portion of the, the anointing of miracles and wonders and signs. 
that they they they're what what they are doing right now. <laughs> they could do it all day, but your healing, your restoration will not be complete because I'm trying to get you to experience me. And I said, okay. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna keep it real. I just realized it just reading through this. Mhm. Mm and just reading through this, I was like, Lord, I know you to be a healer, cause I can pray over somebody that they don't even believe in you and you heal them. Why am I still walking around like this? Ugh. Lord, you forgot about me, you know, but then I think about the story of uh, Lazarus. Amen. Jesus deliberately did not go run to save the rescue, well, yeah, save the rescue to Lazarus. Amen. He waited two whole days after Martha sent a messenger to talk to, tell Jesus, say, you know what, your friend is very ill. She's, he's sick. We need you. Come ASAP here. And Jesus was like, you know what, uh, I'm just going to kick back, watch TV, eat some popcorn, you know, drink a couple of colas. Okay, cool. But God, and people have to, we have to understand people of God that do not count, do not count man's slackness as God. Because God is not being slackful. If anything, he wants us to build trust. He wants us to trust him like never before. Because especially where we're about to go, where we're, we're crossing over to now, because we've been talking about crossing over with consistency, amen. Where we're about to cross over is going to take the fullness of Jesus Christ's trust. We have to trust in God like no matter no matter what. If the the wind comes, we still trust. Somebody punches us in the face, we still trust. Somebody take all our money, we still trust. God is that desiring of that people of God. Amen. So I think I'm just gonna do two parts because I feel like I have so much to say and I feel like I was trying to rush and put it all in one. But um, I see you in a sec. Mwah.